Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the Death Cry Gaming Channel. We are going to be doing a tactical guide for chaos. I'm going to go over uh, every unit and what units and upgrades are worth it, what are not. Uh, I put some key upgraded units that you usually see on the battlefield. Chaff, uh, open t units that are very good against open top. Um, you got anti infantry hate, Carnifex. But um, I could probably put a couple more. But yeah, I want to go over uh, the Chaos roster and what roles each unit really uh, you want to play with. Now, these units that are down here, these are more your end game units. Well, this is more mid end game, this one. But uh, so starting off, you have chaos spawn. Uh, now, one thing to note: so chaos spawns are extremely good. Uh, if we go to the thing, they've got literally six movement. Uh, they do a melee attack, which is not bad when you're fighting in forest. Uh, the game move through cover, which is awesome. Uh, they're fearless, so you can't pin them. Great versus Tau. And they take less morale hit. So all in all, very good. They get this ability where you get a random mutation uh, every turn. And what that is, it could be damage, could be more attacks, could be armor. And basically, it's, it's pretty cool because like if you have a, a group of these... And say you want to scout, well then you should take the one that gets the armor, uh, random armor, so that you can put it in the front there. Chances of it uh, dying uh, are pretty low. Another cool thing is the Chaos Lord, you can level up its crate spawn. I think level 2 does a level 4 Chaos spawn. And then if you Nurgle it, you literally have a 50 HP unit. Uh, of course, it has one armor, but there's a chance that uh, the following turn you get a mutated beyond reason. You you might get the armor trait with it. So uh, I think the armor trait on a mutation is um, I think it's six, I believe, plus one from well, if you get the tech. So yeah, it's it's with 50 HP. That's more than um, well, that's as much as a Lehman Rust right there. Uh, of course, Lehman Rust has 10 armor, but uh, the other thing, though, is it is weak to blast because uh, it has three models. Stuff like, let me just do an artillery here. So that would be its kind of weakness. What? Yeah, they're not on the same team. I'm wondering why it's not allowing me to shoot that. That's uh, so weird. You see that? But yeah, it, t it shows you the damage. Um, but the because we did Nurgle on it, there's so much HP that this is not even killing a model. But uh, 12 damage is quite a bit when you look at all the damages. Uh, Anyways, uh, so what I use these units for, very good flankers with the movement and move through cover. You can zone people out. Uh, because of the random mutated beyond reason, you have good tactical uh, foresight on you know, what to use it depending on the turn. And you have a few of them you can decide. Uh, so one other thing I would say is... Uh, you want them to surround your MOP. Uh, what's good about that is because they have six movement, you can have them surrounded by the MOP. The MOP will buff their accuracy and their damage up even more, which uh, does a lot. Uh, so that's a good combo right there. Uh, so the next troop we got uh, is Cultus. And... 
main purpose of cultists, I would say, is obviously you're building your bases with them. Uh, they also play a role with their sacrifice ability. Uh, now, what I would say about that, just one second, I'm multitasking right now. Uh, yeah, uh, I would, the sacrifice ability really only applies mainly to uh, when you have the labor corpse up or the, I forget what it's called for chaos. I always call it labor corpse because I played AM so much, but uh, buildings. Warp forge. Okay, let's use the right terminology. Uh, Warp Forge. So this building is going to speed your production by two times. And then with the right of change, that also increases your production. You have, if you have two Warp Forges, that increases it by another four. So uh, what ends up happening is your population can't keep up. So one way to utilize that high production is you would sacrifice one of these because these units themselves uh they're not really meant for damage dealers they're strictly for clearing pathways either for your havocs or for your tanks or eating overwatch shots from heavy destroyers uh for instance if i go here that sort of has a blast damage but you'd rather them take that damage than something like a high value target uh, so yeah overwatch fire the other cool thing that they have is this tech you can get called the noctilith crown um, one key note is it doesn't overlap on units that have uh, the demon damage reduction okay because this does damage reduction so one thing to note guys um, if you have a key word it, do, uh, it doesn't go like 25, 25%. Like it, if they use the same keyword, they don't overlap each other. So uh, one thing you can notice is if I put where's my show you. All right, so we've got 4.5 on warp talent, 6.8. So the berserkers will go lower. The warp talents will stay at 4.5. So if we put See, now the warp talents are 4.5 along with Sorry, the berserkers are 4.5, but the warp talents are still 4.5. It's because uh, it doesn't stack with demon traits. So see how they both do invulnerability damage. Uh, so that means then if you're going to use these uh, crowns, then you want to use it on units that don't have the demon trait, such as Halbrutes. Uh, very good with Halbrutes, in fact, because think about Halbrutes is you have a lot of armor. Um, you want them to take some damage. They also have reduced melee damage reduction, which is not invulnerability da damage. So if you have uh, the crown plus their natural ability, they're doing uh, 66 if it's a melee unit. So watch this Carnifex. You can see it only does 7.8. So it was 7.8. Now look at it, 6.3. So yeah, um, uh, they only cost two power upkeep, so keep that in mind. But uh, you generally want to put these down if you're pressing or if you're holding a key position, say it's a relic or defending your base. When you put it, put these down, you want to put it, like say the army that I'm fighting is this, this uh, at the northern part. Ideally, you want to put your crown sort of situated behind your base. 
um, either here, here, or here. If you put it here, then one of your units over here can get protection, so it's not a bad idea. If you put it in the front, they only have 24 HP, so they are pretty easy to snipe. But if you put it more in the back, uh, it makes it a lot more hard, and then it gives your city um, a damage reduction. So, what else do I want to talk about? So yeah, there's that's pretty much what the cultists you want to do is use it on your economy when when you want to grow it. Uh, use it in Overwatch attacks, but ultimately they're you don't care if they die really. Well, you don't want them to. You rather sacrifice them than to die if if they are gonna die. But again, um, Overwatch fire, making crowns, clearing wire weed and forest. And that's pretty much their role. They're not damage dealers per se. Chaos they got case chaos, chaos marines. Uh, one thing to note: chaos doesn't have a lot of anti-air. Now, I wouldn't say marines are anti-air, but if you're against hornets and whatnot, um, at the start they're decent. Although they get outmatched by the berserkers, and they get outmatched by the havocs, which. I don't have down. So let me havocs. Okay. Uh, so, but they're they're your entry level marine. Uh, I think I wouldn't build honestly them so much. I would focus either on berserkers or havocs at the start. Uh, but until you get these unlocked, then you could build maybe one one more of these. Um, pretty much nothing to write home about. Uh, the range two is nice considering most of your units are melee. Um, but yeah, I, not, nothing really much to say. They're, they're basically like space marines, but uh, they can get a little more tankier with the boons you get and or the mark. Now, the marks are up here. Uh, I think Mark and Norgal is is best on your Chaos Spawn just be, just due to the sheer ridiculousness of the, the HP they have. So you can really boost that up by a lot. Um, second, you have Crone, which is ideal on uh, your Havocs. So pretty much if you're going lots of Havocs or you have lots of Havocs on the battlefield, you probably want to spend some time unlocking Crone and throw that on your Havocs. Uh, now the Crone Chaos Berserkers, they come defaulted with the Crone Mark. So they're already marked up. Uh, you can't mark these uh, the Crone Berserkers, but you can unlock um, Icon of Wrath. So Icon of Wrath is like an upgrade on top of Marker Crone. And so you can put that on your Berserkers once you got that unlocked. Um, or put that on Hathix. Uh So I would say with Chrome Berserkers, they're very strong. Um, you can see the damage. If you put them in, say, they're best used in a Rhino. Uh, a rhino with uh, the dirge trait, and what you what you do? Let me just move this out of the way. So what we can do is um, oh shoot! Oh, they're ah uh, they gotta wait a turn to come out. When you put them in transport, I was going to show, but basically, pretty much, like, the weaker chaff, yeah, they can come out and, like, almost one-shot them. But your Rhino can move, damage them, and then your Berserker comes out to finish them. So it's a good combination there. Also, there's the fact you could move right up and do melt bomb attacks on vehicles in, if you have them in there. Uh, so, but I would say if you're going with lots of Berserkers, you want to utilize the rhinos with them now the other part is learning how to not have 
you want to make sure like uh, how to put it this way so let's do our vision thing here take that off but um if you're using dirge and you want to go in with lots of lots of guys then ideally let's just pretend okay so say say we know we saw them move back in this forest here if say you had dirge um what you can do is if you know there's a barge there on overwatch thing is when you go here uh units back here back here back here can't fire on the rhino so just remember like dirge is best used when like in this event where we know there's only overwatch here well let me get rid of some targets there's only watch overwatch here here and here so ideally probably right in the middle would be the best uh for dirge cast and um uh that's what i just want to say about that like you wouldn't want to send it like save their units back here because they're going to overwatch and then kill your transport with um a full bunch of berserkers or whatever so uh, probably what i would do is use if you're trying to push something that's more in the open use like a low low tier unit like a uh, cultist to eat the overwatch and then you can go in with your but like a setup like this where you have forests over behind the units then it's safe to kind of go in like this it's actually the best tactic because the dirge will stop the overwatch um and then you got warp talons um uh, So they're interesting uh, unit. Uh, they kind of come right at mid game if you tech into it. Uh, I think the best mark on them. See, uh, one thing I'm wondering: a vulnerability damage. Okay, yeah. So don't put again. Don't put this mark on them. Put. So I'll just show you it makes no difference. Alright, so you see the tank does 6.7. If you put the vulnerability mark on them. Oh, actually it worked. The mark worked. Invulnerability damage. Just low some R is not stacking. Okay, for some okay, mark of teaser act does stack. Just, just the loath loathsome R does not stack. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't. I don't know if that's a bug, but so why would this one stack and then this one not stack? I have to ask Rock about that. If that's I'm not sure. Um, so I guess you could use that, but I prefer the Marco Salish if you're going lots of these to then give them. Um, move four and then you could do jump jets and move four um, and basically if you're against like a lot of infantry you can really do a lot of damage you blind them for a turn so they're basically doing no damage to you yeah but the mobility I think is far better than just taking a, a little less damage I don't think it's worth it um, there is also if you put the marker to to Zeech, uh, so, uh, yeah, so Mark of Sanish, feel no pain, damage reduction. So, so right now, this is doing six point two. Oh, wait, we don't. Okay, hold on. Let me make another one. What are these called again? Warp talents. Okay.
So the reason why it's doing a lot more damage, or is range two does more. Okay, so let's see. Wait, six point two, or maybe it doesn't. Oh yeah, so it doesn't. Okay, so this mark doesn't do anything. We just, I just misread it. So I was correct on my thinking. So if it uses the same trait, such as damage, um, invulnerability, damage reduction, they don't stack on top of each other. Okay, but cover does if it used the word cover. So let's put the movement one on them. And then let's see if this works. It's doing 6.2. Yep, so you can see 5.1. So with Icon of Access, it makes them even more um, tanky. So really nice. And he, so that's a, I would say that's their best combo right there. Uh, far as on the tech tree. All right, so it's 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 a bit high up there. Uh, it's tier nine. Uh, so yeah, that's definitely late game stuff. But if you follow my 70, 70 to eighty percent science build with chaos, you can get you can get there um, if the game goes late. Uh, where is? I think that's. Okay, it's on tier four. Yeah, so I think what you want to do is if you open up Warp Talents, then you want to go back and grab this mark. I think that's okay. Um, then you've got Obliterators, which are do really good damage. Uh, You can see right now it's set to Assault Cannon, which is range two. Uh, let's see something. So I think it's every turn it changes or? No, no, it's on Heavy Flamer. So Heavy Flamer does a lot of damage to infantry, basically. Uh, but it goes to range one. So it's interesting. It uh, Now, as far as like, survivability, they are kind of um, on the squishy side. But... Oh, another cool thing is with Marco Nurgle, you can get Icon of Despair really good against Tyranids because uh, it <laughs> reduces melee damage reduction by 50%. So, um, I'm just curious. 6.5. Let's put one more warp talent. Oh crap. Let's, let's end our turn real quick. We're ready, my lord. We're ready, my lord. My lord. No. Okay, so uh, I just want to see how much of a... How much is better. So you've got 50% reduction, 8.8. 8. 8.8. 8. damage reduction. By fearful enemies. Okay. 
So the Carnifex is immune to fear, I believe. Immune to fear. Okay, so he doesn't count as a melee, or it doesn't work that that uh, upgraded buff. So we would have to find something. I think Lictors. If we go to Lictors, let's see the difference. But this is a good way to grow your understanding of matchups and yeah so it works on lictors because lictors don't have immune uh fearless so carnifex has ignored this uh damage thing but a lot of like like if we go to um let's see another big um trying effects maybe does this have fearless oh this has fearless okay so yeah that's gonna do the f full damage but i guess oh shoot okay they're shooting at it yeah so i guess if you're against say you're going warp talons and you're against someone that's going just mass lictors then you can see right here you definitely rather want to go um you want to go marco nurgle with uh icon despair because you can see the difference in 9.2 to 6.8 so that's interesting uh what else are we talking about so that kind of covers it for up for tree uh these guys are quite late game but they are pretty powerful i can see depending on what they have so flamers are better versus infantry and assault cannons are better versus the single target units uh you have icon of flame which i think can be applied to marka to seek to seek which is invulnerable damage i think this is the weakest one damage three three attacks so let's do a check uh so open top i believe this is an open top yep so anything with this little icon is open top so let's just see if we put this on trying to not okay so if we attack get soul blaze and this is an effect that happens on their turn but I don't think it does a lot of damage We didn't really talk about Havocs, but let's just see. Well, if it's doing three attacks, three damage, one armor penetration, it has eight armor. So it's really not doing anything, I think. Like, it's got 14 HP. Let's, yes, let's see how much. 14 HP. Actually, yeah, it, well, Necron heals every turn. So, yeah, it did did nothing. That's what I thought it would do. Yeah, so this is pretty, pretty much useless, this Soul Blaze. I would not uh, waste a tech point into that. There's a few techs with Chaos that are, like, you would never want to research, like, Frey Grenades are by far the most useless thing um bloated is actually not a bad idea it basically could heal your 
injured units to full health, mainly also your MOP, your Chaos Lord. So I wouldn't say this is a garbage thing. It's actually, it depends. If you're not going the lifesteal route uh, or you don't have MOP, then this is something you really want for Chaos Lord. Uh, I would not unlock Chaos Spawns because they cost power to produce. There is no power upkeep, but just the fact that it's using your val your precious power to uh, produce this unit. I would, if you, if you want Chaos Spawn, go MOP. Uh, again, Freight Grenades do not research that ever. Uh, what else not to research? Crack Grenades do not research ever. Um, I never research Chaos Rising because uh, I find this is too way too late in the tech tree to justify picking this up just to save 50% on your next city. Uh, and I, I usually anyways get three cities and that's all I need. So I think this is a dead tech to be honest. Havoc Launcher isn't incredible, but it's... If you have a lot of rhinos, it it basically makes your rhinos into like razorbacks or like uh, it may it makes them um, as good as damage dealers as the rest of the transports uh, in the game, such as rhino um, razorbacks, chame chameleons. So uh, and it has range three. So but uh, it's more uh, it's a little bit under. Well, mean I think like I went. Uh, if you're against space marines, you have increased the morale, increased the melee accuracy of infantry against units of the space marine faction. Uh, yeah, so this is very good. Versus, uh, if you're against SM, I would definitely pick that one up. The icon of vengeance. Uh, that grants fearless to a unit with any mark of chaos. Uh, it doesn't really help. I, th I believe the chaos lord is fearless. Uh, yeah. Uh, your berserkers are fearless. The only thing, like, these would get the bonus, but you don't really have these out on the front line. And you don't want to put marks generally on cultists because they're there to die or to sacrifice. And, uh, I guess... There would be decent on. I'm checking. So it looks like warp towns don't have fearless. So, yeah, I guess if you're building lots of warp towns, it's it's not bad. It makes them not be able to get pinned, and they don't lose morale that much. And I guess same thing with uh, obliterator. So I guess in that regard, it's 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 a good tech. But if only if you're building lots of those units. Uh, so this is good for the late game stuff. Uh, uh, very good tech for extra movement boon. That's good against certain matchups. Uh, with melee. I would not... This is... Like, okay. Our lives for the gods. This is so late in the game. It makes no sense. Especially a level 9 tech to unlock for such a small thing. Like, if they're going to get rid of anything in chaos. I guess this would be a good tech. The grenades are useless. Except for melted bomb. Melted bomb's good. Um, Gifted Mutation is extremely good. I wouldn't unlock Demon Prince, really. Uh, because I'd rather get a Chaos Land Rider or the Armor thing. There's so many good techs in this tree. In fact, uh, you might get lucky and just get a random one when you kill something. So, I 
Uh, rights of unholy pleasure is extremely powerful when you have loyalty. Defiler. And yeah, so pretty much, yeah, I've gone through the worst text not to ever pick up. Uh, so we covered all the infantry. I mean, ha oh, Havocs. You do not want to. So new players, sometimes they get in the habit of putting their Havocs way out in front. And not a good idea. You can see they're very delicate. 9 HP. H, uh, HP. So you generally want them in cover, or you want them beside a warp. Sorry, a uh, Noctilith crown. Our weapons first for battle. Uh, but you don't want them like you want your army in front of them or blockers. If something can get in there immediately, your havocs you're doing something wrong. So again, uh, they're Our very strong. If battle. you look. If we move, okay, you can see the power, like when they are stationary, uh, they do quite a bit of damage. So very good unit. Uh, the hard part I'm figuring out is usually when I do my builds, I either pick Berserkers or Havocs. Um, because I go, heroes and and armory i tend to only do one barracks but if you go more than one barracks i guess you could fit berserkers and havocs into your build it's just that if you're going mop usually that's going to eat up a lot of food because your chaos spawns so you would need a really high food start and i generally go trader start so it's usually difficult for me to have more than one barracks unless i'm doing my non-traditional build which is like have the three city build but uh yeah so i think against if you're against tyranids i would instead of going berserkers i would go uh havocs just so you can counter the high tyrant uh not that the havoc havoc itself is going to counter the high tyrant but at least gives you a little bit of firepower in case the high tyrant decides to swoop in and cause problems for you uh you want to check my other video how to deal with the high tyrant it's usually a warp smith with stun grenade and then you get yourself in position and blast it with your your um beam cannon and that usually does the trick but uh and with a digital weapon um but that said uh yeah so very solid unit but again most players use this you know wrong and always have it in harm's way you you want to protect them basically your goal is to keep the Havocs alive when you're you're fighting an enemy. Okay, uh, we didn't touch on the Heroes of Chaos. Because I kind of... Again, MOP will... Uh, I should just show you... Show real quick. Some Masters of Possession. What is your so, intent? very critical for your army for Chaos is MOP. Um, because it does, so you can see, I'm shooting Carnifex 11 damage, Lictors 11, 15.5. Okay, so watch this. So Carnifex 11, Infernal Power, 17, 11, almost one shot to Lictors. So, extremely, um, See the damage there. A lot of damage, range three. So uh, easy to do with MOP. They then become killing machines, basically. And with the proper marks on them, they do a lot of damage. Uh, and then going into the vehicles here. So rhinos are your are really your. Um, how do I put it? They do decent damage in melee to chaff. They're extremely versatile with healing and they have this stability derp caster which can eliminate the overwatch attacks. Uh, you can get smoke screen. Um, they can heal each other and they have three cargo spaces. So very good. The hard part is not to have rhinos with troops in your the rhino at the very front of the uh 
uh, the front of the battlefield. So meaning is if you're gonna put troops into the rhino, you wanna have it sort of two or three feet or four feet back from your main army. Uh, just because you don't want stuff like that to, to focus fire it and then it dies to all your troops. It has four movements so it can easily get to the front. But sometimes players will, you know, put them all the way in the front and they got a f whole bunch of troops in it, so not a good idea. The the ones in the front should be empty or only have maybe one troop in it if, if you want to play a little risky. But uh, again, very, very solid unit. It's not really a damage dealer. It's more of getting your troops in position or retreating your heroes or retreating a battle that can't be won. Uh, the next up, we got... The Hellbrute, and the best combination for Hellbrute, he's good versus melee uh, units because he gets a, a damage reduction against melee, and and if you combine it with the crown, he's very very tanky. And the fact is, you want stuff to hit him, uh, so he will then get his random uh, mutation thing when he's upset. Another thing to point out is he's very good at, like I said, protecting your Havocs or protecting your heroes. Like you do want him sort of in key spots to take take the abuse and not your, your weaker units. Uh, Muller Fiend, same thing. Uh, this one's very good against melee units because it gives them uh, my 33% melee attacks. But it has uh, the damage reduction built in, so you don't really need the crown thing. And um, it does a lot of armor penetration. It has this says, I will not die. So two HP every turn it gets back. So uh, very versatile, very good unit. The weaknesses is only melee. Air units laugh at it, and uh, that's about it. It's 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 not good versus chaff infantry like guardsmen. It's only really good versus single unit targets such as tanks, doomsday arcs, carnivexes. That's it. Or heroes. Uh, then you got venom crawler, which is really nice with MOP. It will cut down on his uh, his spawn thing. Come forth from the war. I think it does. Reduces the cooldown of reducing ally masters of possession. What so I used it, intent? but it says three. Unless it starts at four? Maybe it starts at four. Yeah, I think it starts at four. But yeah, very good. Uh, it does decent damage. And it's fairly tanky because it has uh, the demon thing. Um... But again, it gives you the needed range thing. So it's good for killing air units or again, just that range too. It's quite powerful. It does have a melee attack, I believe. So see, it does a lot more damage at melee. Uh, then you have a land raider. Uh, basically, you load this baby up with Say you're more elite troops such as uh, obliterators or warps, talons, or havoc, get to the front line, and then this thing's dishing some major damage. So if you get the smoke ability, so 12, 12 damage from turn effects, do smoke, went from 12 to 8. So what you want to do is get the smoke upgrade and you go attack a base. You put this near the front of the base, smoke it up, and then Warp Smith can easily heal it. But yeah, anything with range is not bringing it down with smoke. And I think smoke is good for three turns, so that's pretty powerful. Um, and smoke also, if you do smoke plus the, the crown, I think it does overlap, so... Do check here. So eight. Yep. So if you want to be really nasty to your opponent, 
you can um, also you can move out of the smoke and then something like say a halbrute can go in there and now the halbrute has got uh, range reduction a vulnerability reduction so it's pretty cool oh that's things you could do that yeah with with your Razorbacks, you smoke it, or not your Razorback, your Rhinos, right? You move out, then something like um, a Mulderfing goes in there. Oh, you know what? I This is something I, I just figured out. That is pretty n nice. Because I usually have Rhinos at the end game. I'm like, they're kind of used. Well, they don't do a lot of damage. But now I'm thinking... That one ability against certain factions like Necron that has like lots of range, this could be extremely powerful. Uh, only problem, it's more for base sieging, I think. But you can move out of it and then move your your high priority unit in there, and boom. And that could keep fine with the crown. Wow. So, oh, where the tech tree is smoke? I think it's like, yeah, tier eight, which is sad face because there's so many good techs in this. But that's definitely like, if I have lots of rhinos, I think I'm going to pick that up. Just that would really be good in a certain matchup. Like against uh, AM, Necrons. But it would be more for base sieging because the person could always retreat. But if you're doing this in front of their base, they got nowhere to retreat. And then it's giving you that awesome range reduction. Yeah, uh, it's 10 cool down turns, so it's quite a bit. But you'd only use it like either defending your base or um, if you're attacking the base probably. Uh, yeah, and then we've got air units. Uh, basically, they're pretty good. Uh, their their main uh, you have the worst anti air as a chaos player, so you need Hell Drakes uh, to fill that void to kind of protect you. Um, Defiler is your your game winner uh, if it does go like eighty turns. Uh, this thing is a beast so you've got hammer bane there it goes um again super tanky okay uh so yeah this i covered basically all the the main units um just give you guys an idea of how i would use them what not to do Hope this helps. I will see you next time.